the lost art of using an abstract map. Bob World Builder talked about this in his video. He shows really good examples of how you can do this. I want to talk about some of the advantages of having this one particular tool in your toolbox, this idea of running with an abstract map. So I want to define what an abstract map is just so we're all on the same page. For me, an abstract map is any kind of visual representation of your combat space that isn't using a defined scale. So it's not a five foot grid and you can say like, hey, this is here and this is here, but you're not measuring out specific distances between locations or between participants. Instead, the distances are kind of fuzzy and you can use some of these fuzzy distances that we see in other role playing games like zones from fate or distance, you know, nar narrative distances like in 13th age or in shadow dark of having something that is close or near or far. My favorite distance of all time is the shadow dark double near. I love the idea that you had to come up with a double near, but basically like, you know, it's an abstract distance. It doesn't say it's exactly 30 feet or 35 feet or 25 feet. Instead, it's near, right? Close means you're right next to them. Near means you're within, you know, roughly 30 feet, but it could be somewhere. And far away means you can see them, but they're far away. Double near means you're like, yeah, yeah I'm getting a double near. Double. So the abstract maps are basically any kind of visual representation that you're using where you don't have a fixed scale. That's what I'm referring to as an abstract map. I have an article that I wrote a few years ago about running D&D combat with an abstract battle map. You can find a link to that in the show notes. And I talk about it in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. I talk about it in the Lazy DM's Companion. It is definitely a style of play that I think is undervalued. And I think that my, my, my response to the poll that I ran is it is undervalued. That this is a really good, fun, flexible, fast-paced, very affordable way to run combat that it, that is underused that, that I don't think a lot of people use because they feel like it has to be on a grid. And I'll talk about, I'm going to talk about that, you know, m more often. We have this false dichotomy of the idea of a grid or, or narrative theater of the mind. And you'll hear people say, I hate theater of the mind because I can't see anything. I'm distracted from the game. I, you know, I, I can't understand what's happening. There are some people that have a conditional aphantasia where they cannot visualize what's going on without something. And so they lean immediately to, well, that means we need a five foot gridded map with miniatures and tokens and everything else. And the answer is no, you can do something in between. You can do this idea of an abstract map. A good example of an abstract map is the old original Final Fantasy kind of battles where you had all of the heroes on one side of the map and the monsters on the other side of the map and one of the heroes would jump forward and sweep with a sword a couple times and then jump back and so on and so forth and damage would go back and forth. That to me was like a really good abstract map. Another example is from the game Darkest Dungeon where you have like some villains on the right hand side, some heroes on the left hand side and you could sort of like attack across this one dimensional battle space. That's another example of an abstract map. But often an abstract map can be you take out a piece of paper you take out a marker and you draw a football style diagram of X's and O's and little bits of details about what the environment looks like so that players can look at that and get a general understanding of, of the way it works. My favorite tool for this is the Pathfinder flip mat. I, I've been using them for like 20 years now. I have one in my kit that I carry around with me. I have one that's been basically permanently attached to my dining room table that I use forever. And I love that map because it's very open. It's very flexible. You can draw on it with a dry erase marker. You can draw on it with a wet erase marker and you can make very quick diagrams of what a location is like uh, without worrying and it is gridded so your instinct is to build around the grid but you don't have to or you could say well these grids are actually 10 feet instead of five feet so you could draw smaller rooms but then use a 10 foot grid square instead of a five foot grid square i guess that's not really an abstract map at that point but it still lets you build a bigger area so why do you want to use an abstract map why would you bother with this why why not just use a gridded map so there's a few reasons that i'll give you that I think make it very advantageous. I'm going to start with, so it's speed. It is very, very fast to whip these out. You don't have to worry about the grid. You don't have to worry about a lot of details. You can just very quickly draw the situation. A few lines on the map, a few areas, big circles that can show you things, little X's and O's for where the characters are versus where the monsters are. It's very, very quick to build an abstract map and not have to, not have to spend a lot of time. It can be very, very fast. So from that 
standpoint is extremely flexible and extremely quick to draw out an abstract map and just give your players a visual of what's going on without going through all the nitty gritty detail of using a detailed battle map of some sort. Another big one is cost. One of the neat things about an abstract battle map is the pr like much of the pricing of tabletop role playing games in general starts at zero and there's no upper limit. And the example is you could start with just a piece of paper and a pencil you stole from the local dog track and just draw out stuff. You probably can find pieces of paper in people's recycling bins. So you don't even need to go get a sheet of paper if you don't have one. And you could take like an old pencil that you find somewhere, go to the library. Libraries are happy to give you a, a little pencil. You grab a little pencil and you draw out your map. It could be totally free to make abstract battle maps for nothing at all, with just a piece of paper and a pencil. But... If you want to throw a budget at it, you can go pretty high. You can get your dry erase battle maps. You can get some other kind of little terrain pieces that you want to use. You can go far out to the Dwarven Forge side. I, I, because I like Dwarven Forge as a hobby as well. I, I have a significant Dwarven Forge repository. I also have a lot of miniatures. I still use an abstract map. I still say things like, don't worry too much about the distances here. Just tell me what you want to do. We'll get the character there. Or I'll say like, this is nearby, this is far, or it's going to take you, uh, you know, a move and a dash to get up here. There's lots of different ways to, to deal with that. Dwarven Forge stuff works really well as an abstract map because it looks very visual and very cool, but you don't necessarily have to count out every single square in order to figure things out. Out. Three, and this is a real big one for me, is it keeps you focused on the cinematic action of the game. That when we're, if you're, in my opinion, when we're focused on a five foot gridded map, we're, we're too into the weeds. I know I'm like, I'm making an opinion about this. And if you love your five foot gridded map and you disagree with me, I'm totally on board. You get to decide how you want to enjoy d, &D. I know how I enjoy my game. And I know that for me, when I switch to an abstract map, the, the focus on the action, the focus on the cinematic action going on the game increased. I noticed this when I was playing Fate. I noticed this when I was playing 13th Age. I noticed this when I'm playing Shadow Dark, that when I'm playing these games, there's less of a worry about distance and specific little measures and more of a focus on the things you're doing, blasting people with a, with a burning hands and throwing a fireball across the room and running across the room and hacking and at guys with a, with a sword along the way. If you think about the action movies that we often base our games on, if we the scenes that we want to encapsulate, those scenes are not usually worried about five foot distances. Oh, I got almost close and then I couldn't. Sometimes there's little bits of tactical stuff that are going on in there, but a lot of times it's the, the cinematic action that, that really makes this exciting. So that to me is maybe one of the biggest reasons that we want to use an abstract battle map is hanging on to the cinematic action of the game and still having a visual representation so that people can orient themselves around what's going on. I completely recognize that if you're running pure theater of the mind all the time that you're going to have some players who are just disengaged from the game. They just don't understand what's going on. But one nice thing is all it takes is a little bit of a diagram to show them what's going on and give them an idea of what's happening. And then they're back and engaged with the game again. So that's why I think that like abstract maps are a really good position in between theater of the mind combat which is completely narrative and completely cinematic and detailed gridded combat so i think it is highly underused i would recommend trying it out sometimes for you can and if you want to figure it out and you want to try it out but you're like yeah but i do five foot gridded battle maps all the time and i want to do that one of the ways, just do it for a couple of battles. Do it for some of your smaller battles. Do it for battles where you know the players have an upper hand and it's not a big deal what the positioning is like. I recommend this for Theater of the Mind as well. That if you want to run some kind of narrative battles where you don't have any visualizations at all or your visualizations are very loose like an abstract map, do it for some of the battles that are not quite as super conditional as a big set piece battle with lots of different monsters on it. One of the things that I think that happens when we run all of our games on a grid is that every battle becomes significant because it takes a fair bit of work in order to build those. So we don't run encounters that are easy and we should be running i think gms should be running more encounters that are easy i think players like to have encounters where they have the upper hand i think that it's really fun to run encounters where you don't necessarily know if it's going to turn into combat or not and that's a good time when you can use an abstract map or theater of the mind combat is when you weren't sure if it was going to be a battle but it became one i think that by having the flexibility to create abstract battle maps very quickly while we're running our game makes our it makes it easier for us to improvise the 
game that we're running. And that's really key to the flexibility of making sure that the game is going in the direction that it goes, regardless of what we brought to the table or not. It's the, being able to improvise is super, super important in the game. And you can't improvise if all of your battles are set piece, five foot gridded, super detailed battle maps. You, then you're driving towards those battle maps. You're going to build your encounters. And trust me, I know because I did it. I did it for decades. From third edition to fourth edition, I focused on gridded play because both of those editions focused on gridded play. And I know, I'm not saying those games were bad. My players had fun. I had fun. We know that people really love them. Matt Colville and the MCDM RPG is really focused on the idea of super tactical fights, right? They like that style of play because they're not bad. I can tell you, though, having played that way for a long time, the games where it's like you have, oh, I've got a session. How long is it? Four hours? Okay, that's about three battles that I can run in that four hour period. So I'm going to have battle one, battle two, battle three, and then I have some stuff that's going to take it from one battle to the next. Trust me, they fought every one of those battles because I wasn't about to set up a set piece that they could just walk their way or talk their way out of. Now I am a much more flexible GM. I bring tools to the table that let me build maps quickly, let me set up encounters depending on what we need at the time, random encounters that occur, all different kinds of things that I do. And the abstract battle map is a really good improvisational tool to help me be able to do that. So try out the, the abstract map. Use it for some of your more inconsequential fights. Use it as a tool to help you improvise and put it in your toolbox along with all of the others. You don't have to give up one in order to do the other. You can have big set piece, super detailed gridded battle maps. You can also run some battles in theater of the mind, and you can run some with an abstract map. You get to decide which one of those tools best fits the situation that's occurring at the table and use that tool in order to tell the stories that you're telling. If you like this show and you want more stuff like this from me, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. There is a link in the show notes. It is absolutely free to sign up. You get a free adventure generator for signing up. You get an email sent directly to your inbox that has an article about tabletop role-playing games, plus links to all of the other stuff that I've done. You can support me directly on Patreon and get access to the awesome Lazy DM community over on Discord, help support the work that I do everywhere, and get awesome tools, tips, tricks, and supplements to help make your games awesome and you can pick up my books like return of the lazy dungeon master the lazy dms workbook forge of foes lazy dms companion fantastic adventure books t-shirts mugs calendars all kinds of things on the sly flourish bookstore you can find a link to that in the show notes as well thank you all so much have a great day and get out there and play an rpg